Hi, it's Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. So today for my boho journals, I am going to be painting papers. Now these are going to be background papers that I will eventually put into the journal. So I'm going to use a number of different mediums here and I'm starting with watercolours. Now this is just some old notebook paper. Uh, a fairly inexpensive set of watercolours and all I'm going to do is give them a wet and wet the paper and take a brush and simply take a few colours that are kind of within the same sort of family of colours. So you'll see me using purples, blue, maybe a bit of green I think and just really mixing them down on the page. So I want in this video to show you that it doesn't matter what supplies you have you can use those supplies to best effect to create background pages for a journal. As I say, I'm using a number of different ones here just to show you a range of, of possible techniques. I'm folding that over. It's really just to spread that out. I'll take my brush, just trying to get it right to all of the edges. So this is fairly thin paper. Uh, it was an old uh, written notebook. There was a few pages left. Probably not going to use them for anything else, so I might as well use them for this. And I think this gives a nice effect on the back. Now I have a piece of kitchen towel here. It had already been used for something else. I'd wiped other paint off. And all I was trying to do there was to get a bit of that pattern. It doesn't come out quite as well on this one, but you'll see another piece later on that uh, I'd also used it on where it comes out just a little bit better. What I'm doing here, if you have a stencil, then you can use watercolours through a stencil. Now, I'm not trying to get a very clear effect of the stencil because these are just background papers that I will be doing more work on either before they go into the journal or once they're in the journal. I just wanted pages to go into my journal that already have a bit of interest in them. And you'll see that that comes out a little bit smudged in places, but it just gives me the effect that I want. So I think with this sort of colour, it gives a kind of dreamy effect. And you can see some of these flowers a little bit. Some have a little bit more definition than others, but just giving me the type of effect that I want, because I could then imagine working on top of this. Now, obviously, with watercolours, the thing to keep in mind is that they can be reactivated. So in future, I'll just need to be careful if I was using a lot of wet media on top. That dries fairly crinkled. It's got a lovely feel to it. What I might do is iron them at some point. I'll see. Now this next technique I actually learned from Diana on the channel Artfully Yours with Diana. She did a video on different backgrounds and I'm not going to recreate them all here but I will leave a link to her video uh, both in the description box below and above. So this time I'm going to use more oranges. I didn't clean off my paintbrush, so you'll see that I get a little bit of a mud effect in places. I'm okay with that because in my journal I want a whole series of different colours. So I want some to be very bright, I want others to be more muted. So, you know, I'm, I wasn't bothering about cleaning off my brush in between. So just making sure I've got good coverage all across my piece of paper. So I'm now taking a piece of uh, cling film, plastic wrap, saran wrap, and just putting this down. Now this piece can be used over and over and over. So it's not a case of me then throwing this away. But I've put it down on my page, I've crinkled it a bit. What I'll then do is put the page to the side and let it dry. Now I just leave it about an hour and this is the effect it comes out with. Again, because it's watercolour, it could be reactivated. So I just need to be careful with other mediums. 
I'm now using some spray inks. I don't use spray inks a lot. I find them a bit messy, but nevertheless, if you've got them, then they're a good option to use. Again, just using that same stencil, and I'm just going to spray, I think I've got a red, a green, and a gold, and I'm just going to spray those at different points through the stencil. Again, just looking to create background interest, not necessarily looking to create a finished piece. I've taken another piece of paper because I want to absorb all that ink there and you'll see that on that other one that I used it's come out quite nice as well. And now just going to do it the opposite way. I am going to use every single piece of uh, medium that I can here. I don't want to lose any of it. And of course it comes out uh, there's less ink each time, so it's not as bright each time, but nevertheless, it still gives me a nice bit of colour. So I can imagine that going into a journal and creating a nice background page. The next, I'm going to do some monoprinting with a gel plate. Now, you join me partway through my process here. I missed a bit of the filming. I've had a couple of issues with filming recently. I discovered that there was actually a little bit of paint on my digital display and I think that was preventing the button from being pressed every time I used it. So I missed a bit of this but there's still sufficient here to give you an idea. So what I'm really trying to do here is I'm just using the, the white paint to try and lift some of the paint that's on already. My gel plate had lots of paint from previous sessions still sticking to it. Lots of little bits of paint. So here I was just trying to actually lift some of those up. And you can see that it's done it there. There's bits of green that I hadn't used on this. That was down from before. And I worked away doing that for quite a while. It's quite a good way to actually clean the plate. And I'm quite happy to get all those little bits and pieces lifted. And you'll see off to the side, I've got a book just part of that old notebook again where I was just running the brayer off and uh, running the stencil over it when I'd, I'd used a stencil. So with this you can use acrylics, you can actually use watercolours. I'm just using a range of acrylics today. In this case I'm using some of my Pabio paints, uh, some metallics, here, here I'm just looking at one of the papers from Peter's Handmade Paper, you know, and I'm just thinking I want some of those lovely, bright, jewel-like colours. But, you know, I will use some of his papers, but I also want to create some of my own with those superb colours. So it's a case of using what I've got. And you'll see I just add different colours here and there. Some of them are the, the Dyna paints and they just give a lovely finish. But again, if you've got watercolours, use watercolours. Really, the paint session is just about having some fun. It's about experimenting. So I'm pushing my stencil down into the gel plate. I'm going to lift it. I'm going to put it down there again. And I'm just trying to get a bit of that pattern in a couple of different places. Now, I have been doing a separate series on the gel plate, but I'm not putting any of those videos up until I've completed the whole series. So that will come at some point. Now, this is just printer paper, so not terribly thick. I do use some uh, cardstock thin cardstock at different points. And there you see that's lifted a bit of the pattern from the stencil. And I just play with the gel plate for hours. I mean, I, I actually got to the point where I was surrounded by so many papers on the ground, it was very difficult for me to, to actually get out. So there again, lifting every single piece of paint. I'm not going to waste any of it. 
I think I did quite a number of papers with the kind of oranges, red, gold, and quite a lot with the kind of greens and blues. As I say, wanted very much to be creating these kind of bright, vibrant jewel effect, because when I think of boho, I think of these kind of bright colours, although muted colours work well too. So just doing a similar technique here, and this is where, you know, if you've only got one stencil, then make it work for you. Too often we're, we're drawn into thinking, oh, we need lots of different things, but use the same thing over and over, because each time you'll get a slightly different effect. And of course, with the gel plate, with mono printing, you never know exactly what you're going to get, and that's part of, of the fun of it. And what I also did at, at other points was to do different techniques over others. So some of the watercoloured paper that I did, I then did a bit of gel printing over it, so I was building up those layers. So I think here I'm just going to try and lift some of that paint up again and just using the white, you know, letting it dry as far as possible and then using a layer of white over it can really help. And I'm not even wasting any of that white, that goes down as well. So what I did try to do with all my papers is to try and get colour on both sides so that when these go into my, my journals, I don't have too many pages that just have white on them. And there we go, a nice kind of mottled pink and white. Taking one that I've already printed on and just doing it again. You can see around the edges of that one some of the bits of paint that were sticking to the edges so it's created that nice kind of patterned effect. Picking up colour from who knows when, that was really from a while ago. This is one that's been watercoloured. And the thing is, if you end up getting an effect that you don't like, just go over it. Just keep going until you get to the point where you think, that's the one for me, I'll stop at that. And you know, I can't reiterate enough that these are just for background papers. So these will have much more work on them in future. So I'm going to move on now. And next what I'm going to do is I'm actually taking another gel plate that I have, a much smaller one. And all I wanted to do here was to show you that if you wanted to create a patchwork effect, you could do it with something like this. And I'll, I'll show you another technique later, but if you had a small gel plate, then you can create a nice patchwork effect. So if you don't have fabrics, but you want a patchwork type effect, obviously you can do it with papers, as I showed with my first journal, but you can also just do layers and layers of paint with something like a small gel plate. Though as I say, if you don't have one, then just keep watching and I'll show you another way to do this. I should have put the, the gel plate onto something else when I was uh, putting the paint onto it because it was slipping about a bit. But you know, there's bits going to the page, but that's okay. I really do like these iridescent paints. They're one of my favourite paints, uh, especially to get these kind of bright, jewel-like colours. Now, I might just speed this up a little bit more because I'm basically using the same technique through and through. I 
And I'll just keep going with this, just building up those layers, overlapping, creating different effects where I, I overlap, but giving that nice kind of patchwork effect. And I think this will look nice as a page in the journal, or I'd certainly be happy to use it as an outside cover for a journal. And the more layers that you put on, the more overlapping you do, the more interest that's created. So this is just a book that was off to the side and you'll see that there's lots of pages in there that I will go on to, to do more on. So the next medium is acrylics and craft paints and I'm using mainly craft paints here I think. So I've got a turquoise and a fuchsia and what I'm going to do here is you could obviously do very solid blocks of, of colour and I'm simply using my gel plate here as a palette. You could do simple blocks of colour but what I want to do here is to actually do a wash type effect. So I've just taken a, a largish uh, paintbrush, really soaked my paper and now I'm taking that paint and just giving it a thin wash across the page. So the two colours that I think go quite well together, the turquoise and the fuchsia, and just spreading those out. There was something on, oh no, sorry, I was going to say there was something on the back of that, but actually I think it's just the paint has gone through, so you see it on the other side. I think it maybe picked up something else, or maybe there was other, other paint on it. Yeah, sorry, I am actually just doing the other sides here. So I've got that same stencil out. I'm going to soak my paper. And you'll see that there's a bit of colour going on there. That's just out of the paint that's still in my brush. Doing similar colours here, just keeping with the turquoise and the fuchsia. Getting a good bit of coverage, but keeping it as a wash effect. And this is where I use my piece of kitchen towel. And you'll see this does create quite a good effect. So if you've got textured kitchen towel. This is quite a good way if you don't have stamps or stencils and I've done this a number of times over the years and that gives quite a cool effect. As I say I was very much trying to make sure I had colour on both sides. Look at that there's so much paint in the brush, because it's been used as a wash effect, don't need a lot to go a long way. So again, giving it a light wash, just using up the paint that was there. Now taking my stencil and I'm just going to try and dab through it. Now this doesn't work as well as I thought it would. I think uh, the paint just wasn't sufficiently thick, but you know, that happens. So, change of plan. Taking a little bit more of the fuchsia, taking my brush, and I'm just going to dab it over the stencil, just brushing it over. And there we go. That gives me a bit of background. And again, just reiterating the point, I'm not necessarily looking for clear definition on this because this is all about background. It's just about when you do a mixed media piece you'll put on so many layers that you want to create interest in the background as well as that kind of top focal point when it comes to it. So here's another technique for doing the kind of stamping. Now I've taken a kitchen sponge there. This sponge will do me 
a few years now. I use it to kind of clean things off, but today I'm just going to use it to do some stamping. Now, because it's brand new, it takes a little bit of time to actually get the paint going, but you can create a kind of patchwork effect using this. So it's giving me a more textured look. I quite like that. That might not be to everybody's taste, but I quite like that. And I will just keep going with the sponge to create a nice effect. And again, because I'm doing a... repeating this over and over, I will put the next bit even faster. So again, just taking a range of colours, just mixing them on the palette. It doesn't matter if they mix in together. You see the sponge is now starting to absorb a bit more. So I'm getting more of a, a kind of block effect than, than the first few. Pressing down quite firmly just to get the paint to come out. The sponge will absorb a little amount of it, but uh, if I press it hard enough I can get most of it out. Bringing in a bit of metallic. And I'm just going to paint those in. I knew that if I used a sponge in that case, the, the metallic would probably go a little bit muddy. So just actually painting those squares in. And of course, that's something you can do. You could just paint a patchwork. You don't even need to use a sponge like this. So I think the, the metallic just lifts the color. I use a bit of neon orange here. It doesn't work quite as well was kind of thin, but, you know, I just went with it. As I said already, you just use what you've got and you make it work for you to best effect. Introducing a bit of green. And again, I'm just going over some of the squares that's already there, just in that kind of patchwork effect. No right, no wrong way to do this. Just do as you please. And in a moment, what I'll do is show you how to create a kind of stitched effect. So in my first journal, in fact, in both journals, journal covers that I've made, I've done some machine stitching. Now here I'm just taking a large marker. If you wanted something more subtle, all you would do is use a, a thinner marker. But just using this black paint pen to put down some faux stitching. And I'll put a link to a video I did a little while ago. It was actually on borders for journals and art journal pages and cards, but it just gives a couple of faux stitches as well, so it might be something that interests you. So of course you don't just need to do it in black, you could also do it in white, just with a similar effect. And again, I will either put this within a journal or I would be quite happy to use it as a journal cover. I would just stick it down to, for example, a food box. There I've taken just a gold pen. And, you know, it's actually quite nice with the different colours. The gold, the white, the black. But again, it's about using what you've got. So next is water-soluble crayons, and here I am using the Neo Colour 2s. So what I'm going to do is take three colours, 
kind of in the same sort of range again trying not to make mud but there's nothing wrong with the mud so I've got a kind of I think it's kind of turquoise blue a light blue and a green and just going to mark that all over the page again this is a technique I use quite a bit I've got an old baby wipe here it was dried out and all I've done is to put a little bit of, of water on it and all I'm going to start to do is to blend those colours in so just going, going all over the page now what you do need to be careful of here is, depending on the paper, this is a piece of cardstock this time, depending on the paper, you can start to, to rub it too hard and start to lift the fibres of the paper. So just to be wary of that. Now I've seen me just leave it like this before and just work with it like this. Sometimes I put a layer of clear gesso because again, because it's water soluble, it can be reactivated. So I sometimes put a layer of clear gesso on it. What I decide to do here is to, or at least what I thought I decided, but actually I'm using another water soluble media here and it's gelatos. So I'm just going to do a similar effect with the, the gelatos. And then I show you in a moment another technique for taking the colours back a bit. I'm just using that same piece of sponge, just blending them in. And again, you'll see that I've tried to take some colours that won't make mud again. Adding a bit more water to that. This one doesn't blend quite as well. Sometimes it depends how hard you put your medium onto the paper. So here what I've done is I've just taken some white paint and I'm now going to start to, to blend that colour out. Still using the baby wipe just to move it about a bit. But you see it's just muted it a little bit. I've still got some of those lines in but that's fine. I'm going to do the same here. I just like the effect so just taking this back a little bit. The colour blends a little bit more because of the wet white paint going on top of it. But not too much, it, it mainly keeps it in place. But this means that I will be able to use any medium over it because the, the acrylic will dry and give it a good coating. So here we are at the end of my session. I did do some more jelly printing. You'll see there that I used some, some craft paper. You could use book pages, you could use old maps, notebooks magazine pages, anything at all. And what I've tried to do is to get a good range of colours, tried as far as possible to get it on both sides, but I now have lots of papers that I can start to make signatures with, but I will combine it with kind of junk with old book pages etc when I come to do that. So that's what I'll be doing in the next video is starting to pull my signatures together. I will be doing some more work on these pages in a future video as well and looking at how we start to put maybe a bit more decoration on them before actually sewing them into the journal. But next time it will be about preparing the signatures. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing the different ways you can use different paints to start to create background pages. So thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.